Coach Frazier, Pat Freeman from the Buffalo Criterion newspaper. How are you today? I'm doing good, Pat. Thanks. I had not talked to you uh, since you were selected to the Black College Football Hall of Fame. I wanted to congratulate you. Uh, but most of all, uh, your reputation around the league precedes yourself everywhere I go. Uh, your players, your ex-players, and colleagues all speak so very highly of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much. Very quickly, I wanted to ask you about the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, yesterday, I think you played a, a great game. You forced two turnovers, and uh, you did a great job in the situations you were put in. But with the Cincinnati Bengals, my question is, you had a brief moment with them, really one and a half drives, and they were having some success. How do you slow down uh, Tyler Boyd, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Joe Mixon? It, it seems like you really have a challenge coming up on Sunday. Yeah, they are a really good offense, and all those guys you mentioned, they are playmakers. I mean, they do a great job of moving the football and scoring points. So we're going to have our hands full for sure on defense. And, um, you know, we're going to look at our tape on the few plays that we got and look at their games, uh, most their most recent games as well, and just try to see what we can learn and try to come up with a good plan. All right. I want to congratulate you again. Uh, as you know, I'm an HBCU guy and covered this league a long time. Very, very proud of you. Congratulations. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Leslie, uh, Thad Brown and Roger, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Cool, I appreciate it. Uh, on the, the game plan thing, how unusual is it for you that you had a game plan for this game in Cincinnati, didn't barely use any of it, it's only three weeks later, so ostensibly most of it's probably still good. Do you try? How do you maybe come up with this week's game plan without trying to go crazy coming up with different things when you already had something you thought was going to work in the first place? Yeah, you know, that's a great point. And so much of it is, where's your team at now compared to where we were at that point? Uh, you know, who are the guys that are playing? Uh, what are some things we're doing well or not doing so well compared to when we were getting ready to play them? So uh, it's a little bit of a give and take. Uh, we had a plan in place, and you're right, we didn't really get a chance to get into it very much. And now you're looking at tape of their most recent games and seeing if that plan still applies. So. Uh, we've got some things to try to figure out, uh, but we got a few, a few days to get it done. Is three weeks enough for things to change a lot to where you want to, you end up doing things a lot different, or do you have to kind of worry about overthinking it too much and, and looking at two games and saying, well, you know, I don't want to take a 90 degree turn from what we researched the previous game, you know, three weeks ago. Yeah. I think you got to be careful about digging too much and trying to uncover this or that. Uh, because we, we spent a lot of time prior to our last game. And you're right, it's only been three weeks. And, for you know, they're, they're, they've only played two games since we played them, and by same with us. So you have to be careful about overthinking it and overanalyzing it and end up giving the players too much. And you end up not playing your best football. Appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. You're welcome. Coach, good afternoon, Mookie I lost the, I lost the, uh, your voice. I, 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 oh, there you go. Okay. I'm good. Good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey man. Um, 231 total yards, 42 on the ground, four sacks, 25% on third down and two turnovers coach. How impressed were you on how the way your defense played yesterday? Wow. Look, I was so impressed with those guys. I mean, they were put in some tough situations yesterday and they stood up man, time and time again on some short bills and just kept us in the game. You know, they didn't blink as Bond would, would, would say. And uh, just extremely proud of the way they, they played and performed and the way they ended the game as well on defense, getting out there, coming up with a fourth down stop. Uh, just a great job by all of our players. Absolutely, Coach. And how tough is it to come off the bench bone dry and make some of the plays that Kyrie made? Being 6'2", physical, and could run, is that a matchup we could potentially see versus Jamar Chase this week? You know, uh, it's possible. You know, he did a great job for us, as you mentioned, coming off the, the bench ordinarily. You know, there, he's in a rotation, and we, we went in a different direction in this ball game, and he came in and came up with some big plays for us, some game-changing plays, and it's really exciting to see and really good for our team and our defense to see him do that. 
One more, if I may, Coach. Now, this Bengals passing reminds me of the Cowboys in the 90s or how Aikman and Irvin rely so much on their timing to keep the sticks moving. Is there any wrinkles to add to try to disrupt the Bengals' timing this week? Yeah, I mean, they do a great job of getting the football out of that quarterback's hand to uh, protect their offensive line. And uh, it's a great formula. Obviously, they've had so much success uh, getting the ball out of his hand and getting them into their playmakers' hands, and they make plays uh, for him. So we'll have our hands full trying to come up with ways to get him to hold the ball. Uh, but that's the goal, to get him to hold it so we can get it out to the quarterback. Happy ML Day, K, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Yes, good, good afternoon, Coach Fraser. George Radney, Challenger Community News. How are you doing this afternoon? Doing good, George. Uh, first question, just on since today being uh, Martin Luther King Day, what does Martin Luther King Day uh, mean to you? Well, uh, for uh, people of, of, of my race, uh, when you think of uh, the name Martin Luther King and then Martin Luther King Day, the reason that we celebrate, I was talking to my my granddaughter about this uh, last night, uh, George, I just asked her because uh, they didn't have to go to school. I said, do you know why you don't have to go to school? Do you know why they're celebrating Martin Luther King's uh, birthday? Why is, there, why is there a celebration? And she said, uh, Papa Leslie, uh, because of all the things he stood for and what he meant to our race and to our country, uh, civil rights. And I go, bravo. Uh, she's like six years old. And that was a, a really good answer you know, for a six-year-old. So I was like, man, I'm impressed. But uh, Martin Luther King Day means so much, man, not just to our race, George, but to mm -hmm. our country. Uh, when you think about uh, the inequities uh, that were going on in the 40s, 50s, and even prior to that, and when Martin Luther King came along and after what had happened uh, uh, at the, at the, with the bus boycott uh, mm -hmm. to, to change, really change our United States of America and how we saw race and how important it was for us to understand what equality meant. Uh, so this day to be able to celebrate uh, Martin Luther King's uh, birth and, and, and the things that he did uh, for our country means a great deal to me personally and a great deal for everyone in our country because it opened up our eyes uh, to something that was a problem. And he sacrificed his life to change the world, to make the United States a better place. Absolutely, I agree 1000% with you. Martin Luther King Jr. there, I should say, add that junior in there for sure. You're absolutely right. And now back to football, what, uh, what, what, what's your analysis of the uh, of your defensive front, Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones, and Tim Settle Jr., their play? Uh, what, what would be your analysis of them? Well, those guys did a great job, along with Greg Russo, uh, Carlos Basham, uh, A.J. Epinesa. They all did a terrific job us yesterday in the ball game and uh, made the quarterback uncomfortable, uh, had him running around, were able to get some hits on him. I think we had like 11 hits on the quarterback yesterday. And, Wow. I think maybe four sacks. So uh, really impressed with what, what they did uh, as far as the run game as well. Uh, you know, when you talk about a team that had rushed for over 180 yards against us before and finished with 42 yards, averaging yeah. 2.1 yards per carry, a lot of the credit goes to our defensive line. So a tremendous effort by those guys. Yeah, that kind of got lost in the game, that 42 yards. That was unbelievable that they that you guys were able to shut them down. And last but not uh, shut them down to that total. But last but not least, uh, do you think a bump and run is the type of uh, to throw the timing off of the Cincinnati Bengals? Because they like those slant patterns. They like the, their their game seem to be predicated on uh, timing, their offense. Yeah, you know teams have, have tried different ways to slow their offense down, and uh, and you're right. There's a lot of timing and precision uh, within their their offense, and uh, there are a lot of different things different teams have tried. Uh, but not with a lot of success, George. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they're one of the best offenses in the league, and we're going to try to come up with a way to disrupt them as best we can. Great. Thank you very much for your time, and good luck this coming Sunday. Thank you. Hey, Leslie. Uh, I'm going to ask you about Tremaine because so much of the questions that I'm sure you've had for five years have been, what is he not doing? Uh, so what is he doing now, in your opinion, through your eyes, that is different from what you've seen him previously? 
you know, John, he's he's been a, a really good player for us throughout. I mean, he's gone to Pro Bowls. He's received that recognition from around the league. And um, we've always respected his talent, his leadership uh, within our ball club, uh, for sure. And I think now people are beginning to see some of the same things that that we've been seeing all along. His playmaking ability that's beginning to show up. That, that hit that he had yesterday on that third down, I mean, that was – that was Bennett's, man. I mean, that's what you want to see, uh, the physical play that you need from the middle linebacker position. Probably the thing that is that has stood up and really rose up over the last, over this past season. The leadership, the vocal leadership, John, has gone to another level. Uh, and that's, we kind of needed that, especially with the absence of Micah. And then with Jordan being in and out of the lineup at times, uh, even from a practice standpoint, we needed Tremaine to take another step uh, from a leadership standpoint, when it comes to being more vocal, and he's done it. The playmaking we knew would come as he got got more uh, experience and continue to mature uh, within the system, and we're seeing that. But his leadership, that's what is kind of I, – I think when you see the resiliency of our guys, a lot of it kind of mirrors uh, Tremaine's personality and not, you know, the, the highs and lows that some guys get caught up in. He's a, a pretty even keel guy. And that's kind of that kind of permeates our defense. Was that development something that just naturally happened with his growth, or was that something you communicated with him, other coaches, maybe Bobby communicated with him, or did it just rise up naturally because uh, how long he's been here? Well, I think some of it was, you know, an urgent on our part. You know, this is kind of what we need, but at the same time, it's been a natural maturation on his part just growing into that role. Uh, you know, he came in, he was so young, only 19 years old, and then you put him in a, in, in arguably uh, the, the, one of the most important positions on your defense, the guy who's going to be calling the defense, making the checks, communicating to eight, nine-year veterans, line up here instead of there. I mean, that's, that's a lot of weight on your shoulders. And uh, so there's been growth over time as he's gained more experience within the system, and we're seeing the, the, the benefits of that. Is there anything, in your opinion, that if you become more comfortable vocally as a leader, you kind of rise up in that rank, it can actually help elevate the physical play as well? I think so. I think there's something to that. Uh, as your confidence grows and you begin to communicate a, a little bit more, you're, you're almost holding yourself accountable. Because if I'm talking to the guys about, hey, we need to make sure that we're in, uh, at point A versus point B, well, then I got to make sure I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be also. I'm doing the things that are necessary for me to be the best version of myself. And so I think there's something to that. Uh, as you are leading and directing and then just doing a little bit of self-reflection, am I doing the same things I'm asking of my teammates? Am I, am I as demanding on myself as I am on them? And Tremaine has been that. He's been, as, as for everything that he's asked of his teammates, he's taking it to another level when it comes to his own play. Thanks so much, Leslie. You're welcome. Hey, Leslie, from your film study that you've done on Joe Burrow, does anything stand out about the way that he's grown in the NFL maybe over this season? Yeah, man, you know, when you watch uh, his development, his ability to, yes, he can definitely throw the football down the field and he has the receivers to make that happen. But his willingness to check the football down when things aren't there, down the field, that, that's pretty impressive because so often guys are more concerned about their stats, you know, getting the big plays and, and, and getting that alley hoop touchdown. But he's willing to, if you take something away, uh, to check it down and, and keep the sticks moving, uh, which makes it hard on the defense because those completions is not what we want. You know, we, we, we want incompletions. We want to get great negative plays. And, uh, but he's willing to take a four or five yard gain uh, and not always just take try to get the explosive. And knowing that's the way that he plays, and and with what the defense was able to do this past game, what's your what's your message to them about carrying things over and and keeping that consistency uh, in big time games? You just want to continue to challenge the guys to be the very best that they can be, no matter who the opponent is. And you know we're definitely playing one of the best offenses in the league this this coming week weekend. Uh, but at the same time, our, our standard doesn't change. So we just want to make sure we're challenging ourselves as we're going through our film study and our practices 
to be the very best that we can be every single snap and, and have that consistency uh, of being one of the better defenses in the National Football League. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome, man. Hey, Leslie. Um, I wanted to ask first about some of the what the rotation was going to be like yesterday for cornerback. I know it changed, obviously, when Stain got hurt, but I think he had been in there, was on his fifth drive when the injury happened. So were you guys expecting to keep going with him before he got hurt or going into the game? Were you planning to kind of rotate anyway? Yeah, we had talked about, you know, uh, seeing how Dane was doing and then making a decision as we got into the game, you know, what was the best thing to do. And during those early series, I mean, he was doing a good job. Defense was, was doing fine. And then he gets the injury. And now Kair goes, goes in and he does a great job when he, when he uh, got in the ball game. So it kind of took care of itself in a way without us having to make a decision about when it's the right time uh, to begin the rotation. Does that, I know so much of the rotating has been because of different injuries throughout the group as a whole and never want an injury, but has there been anything that has helped guys know of because they've had to rotate so much regardless, are they more prepared than in other seasons of going into a game and not sure, you know, when they'll go in versus other years, if that makes sense? Yeah, I think it's been good for us in that respect where, so Dane goes down because Kerry has been playing. You know, it's not like uh, I haven't had experience in real games, even though this is my first playoff game. I think the rotation helped us yesterday. I mean, he went in, the game was not too big for him. Uh, it, was, it wasn't, uh, oh boy, I'm in a playoff game. What do I do? That wasn't the case. I mean, he made some big time plays. And I think that has a lot to do, Catherine, with the fact that we've been playing him all along. And that helped him to be able to go out there and be, be comfortable in what he was trying to get accomplished. And then last one from me on a slightly different topic for Dean to also get an interception yesterday, obviously a significant, significant to the game itself, but what was it like just as a person, you know, knowing that he's back, what he's been working through to see him have a moment like that? Oh, it just make, makes you feel so good. I mean, um, when you consider, like you said, he's been away from us for a couple of seasons and to bring him back and now he finds himself in a starting role. And to come up with a big play like that in the playoffs, I mean, you're just so happy for him, obviously happy for our defense, but uh, just happy for, for, for Dean uh, to be in that situation, to come up with such a big play uh, that led, I think, to a touchdown following that. I mean, that's huge. And it'll increase his confidence, uh, but also uh, help him in the locker room with his teammates as well, because he's, he's showing he's capable of making those big plays. Thanks, Leslie. You're welcome. Hi, Leslie. Um, I know you've taken a lot of questions um, about Joe Burrow and um, his three receivers, uh, three really talented receivers heading into this game. But I was curious about your perspective um, as a defensive coordinator in for how long you've been around the league. Just what makes Joe Burrow and this group of three receivers so unique? Well, they seem to really be in sync when it comes to the system. Uh, their coaching staff has done a great job of identifying uh, what works best for them. Uh, that's not always the case. Sometimes you'll see a talented group, uh, but they're really not uh, working in one accord. And that's not the case uh, with Joe and his receivers. They, and it, it seems like they're an egoless group as well. You know, everyone is familiar with how good of a player Chase is, you know, where he was taken in the draft. T. Higgins is an outstanding board is maybe you know, arguably one of the best slots in the league. And, but none of those guys seem to have an ego about touches. And that's not always the case. I mean, he spreads the ball around and that's, that's a good thing. And uh, if, if you have guys that aren't concerned about my stats, but about winning, then you got a chance to have something special. And that seems to be what they have. You see in a way, that Joe Burrow helps to make them great by being their quarterback. And also throughout your career, is this one of the better receiving stables that you've ever seen? Oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the better ones that, that, uh, that we'll see, that we've seen this, this season and, and other seasons as well. They're really good as a trio and they've got the quarterback to match it. So uh, it's a good group. It's a, it's a reason why there's good on offense as they are. And Joe Mixon is a good running back. Don't want to leave him out. Uh, he's a good back. And uh, that, that has a lot to do with the success they have at wide receiver because when you are uh, trying to defend that passing game, there are some holes sometimes in, because of that uh, in the run game, and he takes advantage of that. So 
yeah, this is one of the best receiving cores that we'll face and one of the best that's been around a long time. Thank you, Lois Wade. You're welcome. That's all for today. Thanks, Leslie. All right, you're welcome, Caitlin.